everyone, so we are back today with our next installment of our Rainbow Read series, which we have now rebranded to Colorful Covers, which cool. has the same alliteration, so I'm still into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are on the technically last color of the rainbow. Yeah. With violet. So we have some purple books for you today, but we will be continuing this series with some like grays and blacks and whites and stuff. So. Pinks. Pinks. <laughs> but we'll be carrying on, so don't you fret. Um, all right, so I think all three of us have picked five-ish books. Five-ish. Five-ish books, <laughs> um, and we will explain why we recommend them based on the color of their covers. Crystal first. So my first book is an Owl Crate book, and that is My Plain Jane by the Lady Janies. Um, this is pretty much everything I love about books. There was ghosts, there was a bit of mystery, it was kind of historical fiction, which I didn't know that that was the thing that I liked, but I like it when it's characters we already know right. from classic fiction mm -hmm. in a whole new situation. And this is a retelling of Jane Eyre, and there's ghost hunters and a bit of romance, and Charlotte Bronte is an actual character <laughs> who's friends with Jane, and Charlotte's just my favorite character in this book. I just really loved it. I couldn't put it down. <clears throat> it's really funny. It's Yeah, it's very funny. I love these ladies, and... You know, like it just made yeah. me appreciate Jane Eyre even more. Like I don't think I've ever read Jane Eyre, but oh, I've really? seen multiple movie adaptations, mm -hmm. and I've also read Jasper Ford's The Air Affair, which right. is another twist <laughs> on Jane Eyre. So I feel I should read Jane Eyre, but a good one. I'm talking about this one. <laughs> <laughs> so I, if you like good humor and quirkiness, and a good little ghost story with like a mysterious undertone about uncovering secrets. Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend this because it was so much fun. Yes, nice. Was. Yeah. I like that because in Jane Eyre, I don't know, I guess it probably doesn't come through in the movies, why would it? <laughs> but Jane Eyre like breaks the fourth wall a lot. Like, oh. oh. Like, they just, like, dear reader, like, right. I married him is like the classic, like, from Jane Eyre. Um, and so they break the fourth wall in this book a lot right. as well. Like, they're talking to you. And I thought a lot of people would be like, I don't like that it does sound like, well, Jane Eyre. But there's does a reason. <laughs> 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 I kind of loved that it did that. Yeah. I, I love movies and things that break the fourth wall and they're yeah. including you in this, like, yeah. adventure. That's super cool. I didn't mm -hmm. know that. Jane Eyre just moved up the list. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about you, Sally? First one on my list is Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. Um, this is a middle grade one that came out, I believe, last fall. Um, and it is just this, like, spooky masterpiece. Um, the main character is 11-year-old Ollie. Um, her mom has recently passed away. Um, so it's just her and her dad. And... Uh, So she's, yeah, she's having a tough time and she's kind of just like spending a lot of time on her own in mm -hmm. this small town. Um, and she meets a woman by the river near her house who's crying and she's like, checks in, makes sure she, that she's okay. <laughs> and this woman gives her this book and it's basically like, this is your problem now. And uh, she starts like putting the pieces together. Um, I think through like a school project that the like the the book is related to the town's history, and uh, just all this really spooky stuff starts happening, um, and uh, the um, uh, sort of the last half at least of the book takes place on a class field trip mm -hmm. where they go um, to like the the. It's like a pumpkin patch or the or a corn maze or something oh. or there's like sort of like a historical town right the one that like one that you would go to for field trips um but uh yeah i uh it was really like legit scary but <laughs> not in like an overwhelming way right. so well written great characters really keeps you on the edge of your seat and uh there are scary scarecrows in it <laughs> I really want to read. I've yeah. heard really good things about it's it. It's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I think the first book I'm going to talk about is a book called The Smell of Other People's Houses um, by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock. And this is a historical fiction novel about four uh, kind of unrelated characters whose storylines end up converging. Mm -hmm. um, so it's set in like this, I believe it's the summer in Alaska and there's a, a a girl who wants to be a dancer, but she comes from a family of fishermen. And there's a 
like a girl who was raised at a convent and this just like a bunch of like very interesting uh characters and they end up and i can't really say too much but they end up kind of saving each other in a way like they all have different very kind of serious problems and they all their lives end up converging and being better for mm -hmm. it so i think it was just like a really lovely story like it's a very quiet character driven book it's mm -hmm. not like super heavy on like really detailed plot points um but it was just just like a, a, a treat to read nice. and that's just all i'm gonna say about it it's a really short book but it's just lovely cool yeah. and it's beautiful cover yeah it's a great cover <laughs> I really like it. all right my next one is was a complete another beautiful cover uh mm -hmm. it was a complete cover buy for me but it ended up being so good when i read it it is kind of like fantasy and sci-fi together mm -hmm. i didn't really realize it was sci-fi until halfway through and i was like oh it's funny when that this happens is interesting. And really throw the sci-fi yeah. at you um whoops <laughs> But I'm going to read the inside a little bit just because it's been a while. It says, Nadia lives in the city of Canaan where life is safe and structured, hemmed in by white stone walls, no memory of what came before. But every 12 years, the city descends into the bloody chaos of the forgetting, a day of no consequences and no remorse when each person's memories of parents, children, love, life, and self are lost and forgotten unless they have been written. In Canaan, your book is your truth and mm -hmm. your identity. And Nadia knows exactly who hasn't written the truth because Nadia is the only person in Canaan who has never forgotten. So every 12 years when this happens, she, well, she is quite young, so she's only gone through one of them, but she's remembered everything from before. She hasn't woken up without her memory. Right. So because she knows all of these things about what people have done before, she kind of goes to uncover this mystery. And there's kind of like little class systems within, like... There's like the working section mm. and like the political people and people who provide mm. with water, people who provide with food, people who provide with clothes because it is this walled city. But she often sneaks out of the walled city and gas gathers things from like the forest around. Mm. And then her and this boy Gray that she meets, they start to uncover some good secrets. And then you're like... What is happening? It's it kind of gave me and, like slight giver vibes. Mm. Um, I in, just read that recently. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. Not so their right. Their tasks aren't that regimented right, yeah. as the giver, but they each have like you know. Yeah, I could see mm -hmm. what you mean, but it's just. I remember the city just being so atmospheric. Like you could really visualize where they are and what their houses look like and. It's just so good. I read it in like a couple days. Nice. And there's a companion to it called the, the Knowing, which I started but didn't get a chance to finish. And the atmosphere and city in that is just as absorbing. Like it's like, oh, you're living underground? What's happening? But cool. This. Highly recommend it. Really like Sharon Cameron. Glad I discovered this. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So my next one is an Owl Creek Junior pick, and that is The Wizard of Once by Cressida Cowell. Um, so there are now two in the series out, and the third will be coming out in the fall. Um, if you liked How to Train Your Dragon, you will love these books. They are so much fun. It's a completely different mm -hmm. world that she's created, but it's vibe-wise similar kind of uh, style to it. Um, but uh, the tagline is Once There Was Magic. The two main characters in this book um, are Czar and Wish. So um, uh, wizards and warriors in this world are enemies. Um, they both exist within the same world, but they they hate each other. So um, so Czar is a wizard who is of the age where like his magic should have shown up by now, and it hasn't. But he is like the head wizard's son. So like there's. <laughs> You, you want his magic to come in. There's a lot of like shame surrounding the fact that it hasn't yet. And then Wish is the um, warrior queen's daughter, and warriors are like incredibly anti-magic. Um, and uh, Wish has magic, and she is keeping it a secret. Mm. Also, in this world, witches used to exist, and they were like the evil in the world, and um, they are thought to be extinct now, but it turns out that maybe they are not anymore. Um, it's, uh, it took me a, a minute to like mm -hmm. kind of click into like the patterns and language of this book because it's 
um, it's definitely like a world of its own and there's right. a lot of like all caps and dialogue and like it's kind <laughs> of a, like a bit zany in that way but um, but once you kind of get used to that it's awesome and it's also there's a lot of illustrations to go along with the story that Cressida Cowell did herself so like some of them are full page and like really beautiful they're so. all like really spidery yeah. and kind of like um doesn't this ink have a really cool under the dust jacket too does it Am I making this up? I apologize. I, mean, I, I think purple. there are some special editions. I, think I don't the chapters have one is orange underneath. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. On it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's but, a very cool uh, book. Yeah. And uh, with, I oh, just like that they so like cool. have little intros to each of the mm. characters, and there's, you know, there's a map of their world and stuff. I don't know um, this book. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and it's such like a big sturdy mm -hmm. book too. For middle grade, it's unusual. It yeah, like, it's tall, a, tall it's, hardback. It's hefty. So yeah, two out already. Um, I'm blanking on the name of the book too, but it is out um, and book three will be out in the not too distant future. Awesome. All right, so my next one, we're gonna go for a classic here. Ooh, I've chosen Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I love those covers. I love this edition. I actually, I think I might've told Karina this already, but I bought this edition for Karina <laughs> for Christmas one year and kept it. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Peter Pan. I have like such a like a this is like a connection to Peter Pan. And I got, when I was growing up, I was one of those kids who just loved being a kid. Like mm -hmm. I had no desire to get older. I wasn't one of, like I wanted to be twelve forever. I'm like, yeah. twelve is a good age. You're smart enough not to like get run over. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I want, but so when I read Peter Pan, I was like, and I read it. I think when I was maybe whatever. 14 maybe? yeah and I was just like oh, I just like wanted to go to Neverland and I uh, just absolutely fell in love with it and have you seen Hook I have seen Hook. okay thank good. goodness <laughs> I have seen Hook <laughs> surprise surprise I yeah. also loved I don't know if you guys saw the remake of Peter Pan that came out in like the mid 2000s yeah I loved that it's movie like in the theaters in New Zealand <laughs> oh there you go but um I think this is just a, such a great classic book absolutely um Sure, you guys know what it's about, so I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> but and this edition is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's the puffin something. The, the, it's puffin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, moving on. So my next book is Kakasuna. Um, it's Be Light Like a Bird by Monica Schroeder. Um, I think I've talked about this book in a couple videos mm -hmm. before, uh, but is um, a heartbreaking yet heartwarming middle grade story about this young girl named Ren. Um, she loses her father and as a result of that kind of loses touch with her mom as well. Her mom doesn't want to talk about her dad. She just is kind of shuts herself off from everybody else. So Ren's left kind of alone dealing with this shock. And then suddenly her mom packs up the car and moves them to another town where she's alone, the new kid, practically parentless. And it's just her trying to cope with being in this new city and dealing with all this stuff. Um, she befriends a boy in her class named Theo, and I really like the friendship that kind of blooms between them. It's just, uh, it's just really sweet. And he's kind of like tags along with her for a while to figure like, figure her out. But eventually they kind of become buddies. And she, as a little escape, she finds this pond and like meadow area in this town. And her and her dad used to bird watch. So she mm. kind of like, starts bird watching and finally like starts dealing with her grief and and again another cover by I just couldn't resist this Gorgeous. beauty um but it delivered and it like it has stuck with me for so long and I've like called my bookshelf so many times right. and I'm just like you can just go back in there because <laughs> you're never leaving because I'd like to read it again mm. it's just so like mm, you're gonna cry is it but middle grade? It is middle grade, yeah. I'm sad middle grade other girls. Yeah. Middle boys, <laughs> but it's uh, highly recommended. Cool. Sounds nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. It's a nice book. <laughs> <laughs> Next one on my list is one that I just very recently finished, and that is Time Sight by Lynn Janelle. Um, this one was so cool. Uh, it is set in Scotland. Um, our main character Will and his little brother, uh, his little brother Jamie, are sent to go and stay with their aunt in Scotland. Um, they're from the States, but 
the whole thing is set in Scotland. Um, because their mom, who is a doctor working with like a Doctors Without Borders type um, organization, has actually like been, um, she's in trouble in whatever country that she is in. So her, their dad has to go, you know, get her out of wherever she's been captured, basically. That's, that plays surprisingly a small role in the book, but <laughs> it is like a through right. line. Yeah. So, um, with the help of a, a magic eye book, um, will really, um, by accident realizes that like, due to the fact that his family's bloodline has been in this piece of Scotland for so long, um, uh, like within this this border of, of Scotland, he can actually travel through time. He just kind of has to like let his eyes relax in a certain way and it like opens up <laughs> a portal into other times. Um, so it's uh, historical fiction. I think a lot of it is pretty historically accurate. I would have to do my own research right. on that. But um, it's just really cool. So he and his little brother and his cousin, who is um, this very funny, like, kind of impish Scottish girl, um, get into all kinds of trouble traveling through time. But they meet, like, they go back as far as, like, the Romans and, uh, you know, sort of more like knights and kings right. time and there's a there's a bunch of different time periods that they leave to but um it was really cool and it it all like it was like very nice and cohesive right um and it's just a lot of fun so if you like like fantasy historical fiction yes there please. you go that sounds awesome yeah it's great and a great cover yeah all right next up i have a book that got a lot of buzz last year um, and for good reason, and that is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan. Um, this is about a girl whose mother has committed suicide, and she is now convinced that her mother has transformed into a bird. Um, she is half Taiwanese, I believe. Ah, uh, yes, half ta she's half Taiwanese, half white, and after the death of her mother, she goes to Taiwan to spend time with her family there that she doesn't really know, um, and discover, discover more about what's happened to her mother. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful story. Um, it's quite sad, there's a lot of grief involved, obviously, um, and just a lot of, like, going through, like, the stages of grief. Like, you know, there's, she's just convinced that this bird is, is her mother. Um, yeah, it's just a beautiful book, so well told, um, beautiful cover. Um, and I just, I just loved, I just loved it. It's not a kind of book that I normally read. I don't love to read really sad books very often, but this one has stuck with me and I just absolutely loved it. I love that cover. It's so, so gorgeous. <laughs> and this one I actually found a signed copy. You know, and they, oh, we got this in New York last year. And it says, believing is a type of magic in it. And it's signed from the, nice. from the author, which is lovely. Nice. Very cool. Um, my next one is, Quite different from the one before. <laughs> um, it's No Cosplay With My Heart by Cecile Castellucci. I, this was an impulse buy. I saw somebody I know on Instagram had read it and I was like, that sounds like fun. Amazon purchase. Right. And it was everything I needed it to be at the time that I read it. It was heartwarming and fluffy and nerdy and it's just, it's just fun. I read it in like a day. <laughs> it looks fun. Um, it's the story of Eden who has a lot of stuff going on at home. Her best friend is leaving for the summer and she's not really outgoing in her daily life. But when she cosplays, she feels that she can be, she, she feels taller, she feels stronger, she feels louder. And so she decides to go to a comic convention by herself. And she just happens, there's this boy in town that she kind of likes and she meets this other boy and you know, it's, it's a YA romance <laughs> and it was everything I wanted it to be. Yeah. And in the end, she kind of goes to a few different conventions throughout the story, dressed as the same character as to be part of like a, a competition mm -hmm. for what her cosplay is. And her costume is Gargantua, this like super tall woman from Team Tomorrow. <laughs> And I like how throughout the book you get Team Tomorrow chapters. Oh, that's, that's cool. just like 
the, it's like reading the history of the Avengers. It's right. just like new snippets in the history of how stories are told and it's just like background on Team Tomorrow, which was really cool. So it felt like they were almost a real thing that you right. can get into, but completely fictional. That's fun. But yeah, just a nice little afternoon hug. <laughs> That's why it was perfect. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And just the right amount of nerdy. <laughs> Uh, my next one may have already cropped up in the series, we couldn't remember, but uh, that is Arlo Finch and the Lake of the Moon. Uh, <laughs> this may have been featured already in our dark blue covers, but it also has purple, and I haven't talked about it before. And we're it's... just happy enough to talk about exactly. it Exactly. Oh, <laughs> happily will double endorse this. <laughs> um, this is the second in the Arlo Finch series. Um, we included the first one in, in an Alcray Junior box as well. This one just came out in February 2019. We can't, can't wait for part three, <laughs> but uh, basically this is um, Arlo and his uh, his ranger Pine Mountain friends are at summer camp and um, uh, all sorts of weird stuff happens there as well. There's, mm -hmm. um, I, I won't give too much away other than like, it's just, it's such a fantastic continuation of the world that was already mm -hmm. started in book one. Um, just read this book. They, this is <laughs> such an incredible series. They are so much fun. So this is middle grade, so I think it like definitely could be enjoyed as young as eight, but like I genuinely love this like as a grown up. My <laughs> mom has read the series. She's like, when's book three coming out? Um, it's just like huge crossover appeal for, uh, it's, it's just like solid writing and storytelling. So anyone and everyone just read this series. So good. And I always mention when I talk about them, like my like selling pitch is that the first one just introduces you to such a cool world and great characters and the second book shows you what this world can do. Yeah. It's like so magical yeah. and it's just like, yeah, I need the um, third book like yesterday. John August is actually like before he started the series, he's a screenwriter like for like movies you would have mm -hmm. heard of. Like he, uh, Big, Big Fish, Fish, Charlie's Angels, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Corpse Bride, Frank and Weenie. Like he's, he's a legit amazing writer, but because he's, comes from a screenwriting world, like everything is very visually fleshed right. out. Like you can really see what's going on in your head. So, ah, love them. All right, so my next book is a memoir and it's called You're Never Weird on the Internet Almost by Felicia <laughs> Day. And I actually read this like right when I started this job and it was like a good, like, okay, <laughs> like I'm gonna be on the internet all the time. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not even like, a huge fan. I like Felicia Day, but I'm not like, invested. She is. I she's love like her. a nerd, a professional nerd. <laughs> she's like an actress, and she has like a big YouTube channel called Geek and Sundry. That's this whole corporation. Okay. Um, she was in Doctor Horrible's Sing Along vlog. Right. Okay. It's like my favorite. You've never seen Doctor Horrible's <laughs> Sing Along. Vlog? It's not Patrick yeah. Harris. It, it's oh, yeah, okay. No, okay. Yeah. <laughs> There's a great show called The Guild, which is yeah. like based around her created guild in like an, a multi-player online right, game, yeah. like World okay. of Warcraft or something. It's awesome. Yeah, so this was just really funny and also kind of like, I think this was published, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but uh, right after like Gamergate happened. Yeah. So people mm -hmm. was like, she was getting doxxed. Yeah, like, it was that just, I know about. Yeah, so, so like there, there's just more serious sides to it and like the downsides of the internet, but most yeah. part it was like, it was just like her growing up nerd essentially yeah. and I just I really I really enjoyed it it's super funny she's a very funny lady cool so I love a good memoir yeah yeah I don't even have to really know much about them as a person to be honest I might want to borrow that from you that sounds like something yeah. I would enjoy I think I listen to the audiobook and she reads it oh wicked that's what I'm so <laughs> she's just so good yeah um so my final book keeping with the geek <laughs> is uh Geekerella by Ashley Poston um Another book in the vein of going to a comic book convention mm -hmm. with YA romance, fluffy, <laughs> amazing. Um, this is the story of Elle and Darian who kind of accidentally meet through text. So they, they're having this kind of online texting relationship, but that's it. She doesn't know that he's the star of this TV show that she's practically obsessed with. Mm -hmm. And he has no idea that she's such a massive fan. So without even knowing that who he is, she has been dying to go to this Excelsicon 
Excelsicon convention to go into this cosplay competition as this princess. Is she a princess? I don't remember. This really like badass female character from this TV show that mm -hmm. she loves. Um, so she like works in like a food truck <laughs> with her friend and she just scrapes together all these, all her tips and all the money she can to go. But it also has that Cinderella background where she's got like a crabby mom and it's a stepsister who's a real pain. Um, just so much happens. I can't lay it all out for you. But I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun and I cried because I'm a crier. I was just so happy. Are you excited for the sequel? But I am. I'm very excited for the sequel. I think it sequel. just came out today? Oh. oh. Yeah, today or yesterday. Today. Yeah. Not as you're oh. watching this video, but yeah. <laughs> in real time. But, uh, hmm. There you go. Add it to the list. <laughs> but yes, I am very excited for the sequel. I very much enjoyed this. I guess it's I guess it could be a little tropey, but that's all it's the things fun. I love. It's very fun. I'm such a sucker for YA yeah. romance. I'm not even kidding. But yeah. And I love this cover, so. Very cute. Yeah. So my last one is Etiquette and Espionage by Gail Carriker. Um, so this is set in the same world as her adult series called The Parasol Protectorate. Oh. Don't need to read that to read this. It's just like very minor crossover. Um, but this is a YA series about a girl named Sophronia. It's a steampunk, like historical Victorian times. Um, and she is like a pain in her mother's butt. She's <laughs> not a proper young lady. Mm -hmm. um, so her mother sends her to, what's, what's it called again? Madame, Mademoiselle Geraldine's Finishing Academy for Young Ladies of Quality. <laughs> and this is set in a dirigible. So okay. Uh, wicked. Like a blimp kind of thing. <laughs> um, and not only is it a finishing academy, but it's also the art of finishing. So they get trained to be, um, so it's one thing to learn to curtsy properly, it's quite another to learn to curtsy and throw a knife at the same time. That's Welcome right. to finishing school. <laughs> oh it is so much fun, it is so tongue in cheek. Um, Gil character is, Gil character is like very into this time period, it's just she really nails it on the head. Yeah. Um, but it's just hilarious. Just hilarious. Um, she also ends up getting like, it's steambug, so she gets this little like, looks like a wiener dog. But it's a steam, like steam powered thing. But it's like it's kind of like live, alive. But it, she wears it as a bag to. <laughs> and it's called Bumber Snoot. <laughs> and she has to, she can like store things inside Bumber Snoot. And he's like this little like mechanical dog friend. Like, I love it. I love it. <laughs> and, I mean, Bumber Snoot's probably my favorite. <laughs> but I just, it's just such a fun series. I really want to reread it because God Character is just a really hilarious writer. Nice. And I think that's that, always been <clears throat> these books that I just want to I read. I think the second book's called it's this. Uh, Etiquette and espionage, um, petticoats and piracy. Like they're all like all these different ones. <laughs> <laughs> they're just and they're just great. But that was my so fun. One. Yeah, that's actually one that I've been meaning to read for a long time, and I completely forgot about it. It's very funny. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Added to the list. <laughs> all right, so now you have two books you haven't read. I have read. two that absolutely fit the purple covers, um, but I haven't read any of them because they both just crossed my desk. Um, one is part two of Sanity in Tallulah, so Yay. this is called Field Trip, um, and they are going on a field trip for a real live planet. Um, they, you know, them and all their classmates have grown up on a space station, but but haven't actually like been right. to a planet for the most part. Uh, and uh, uh, it looks like we're getting to meet some new characters. We get to meet Sanity's older sister Prudence, who is um, a bit of a grump, like a teenage grump, <laughs> but uh, I'm just so excited because I loved the first book so much and it sounds like like the, yeah, just even more adventure, the adventure and continues. I'm gonna gobble this up as soon as I can. Yes. Um, so that one comes out this October. And then the next one that I'm so excited about, I've heard a lot of great things about this, doesn't come out until next January, um, is Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mbalia. This is um, one of the, I, I can't remember how many titles there are on the Rick Ryder, Rick Roy Gordon Presents imprint now. I believe there's at least three. At least three and that have been released, yeah. but I feel like this is actually like the sixth right, or something right, right. When it, once it comes out. Um, sounds so cool it is middle grade um but uh what i'm loving about basically all of the books that have come out on his imprint so far are that um it's sort of like 
upper middle grade and there's like massive crossover appeal so mm -hmm. um it sort of like straddles a line that needs to be uh full filled out more and that like right. sort of like young teen late tween yeah mm -hmm. You know, the main character is thirteen, but like, there's no nothing too no too right? teeny kind of. Basically, though, this our main character's name is Tristan Strong, obviously, um, and uh, his best friend. Um, they were they were in a bus crash together, I think, a bus accident, and his best friend died. All he has left of him is this journal that he wrote all his stories in, and then this like creature comes, and steals the journal, and somehow Tristan ends up like punching a hole <laughs> into a different universe or like it, he opens up a portal um it's being it's being called a middle grade American gods <laughs> That's uh, so I love that. and, uh, originally imagine world populated with African-American folk heroes and West African gods it sounds incredible I cannot wait to read it um I'm just loving this imprint so much. Yeah, They're doing awesome, totally. awesome stuff. Woohoo! Yeah. So that uh, wraps up purple book covers, violet book covers, depending mm -hmm. on how you want to <laughs> yeah. say the rainbow. But um, yeah, we have been having so much fun with this series. Like we said at the beginning, this is not the end. Um, we'll be coming with white covers and black covers and pink covers and if Whatever. we can find rainbow, rainbow all color. over, <laughs> we're not done. Um, but uh, yeah, let us know which your favorite ones of the ones we've talked about. If you have other favorite purple covers, show us those. Tell us about those. Um, yeah, and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Like for more videos every week. And happy reading, and thanks for being awesome. Bye. Bye.